Welcome to the SeaWorld, the Conservatives podcast. This is the Icon 19 conference special. I'm Jenny Mathiasen, an objects conservator based in South Yorkshire. I'm Chloe Rumsey, an objects conservator based in Greater Manchester. And I'm Christina Rizek, an objects conservator based in Cambridgeshire. So it's quarter to seven on Wednesday morning. And I've just left my house to go to Belfast and I'm not expecting to get there for another 14 hours because I was quite keen not to fly there both ways if I could. So I've taken the possibly stupid decision to do my outward journey by ferry and train, which means it's going to take me a very long time. So I'm setting out from my house north of Cambridge and I'm going to be going into London to King's Cross, scooting across to Euston and then going straight out of London again um, all the way to Holyhead in Wales. So wish me luck. To apologise to customers with reservations in coaches G, H, J, K and L. Due to the earlier flooding between Chester and Crewe, this service is short form today. Service will be diverted between Chester and Crewe and in approximately 40, 40 or minutes on to our journey. Do apologise for this and for the inconvenience this may cause the people. So, I'm not sure how much of that you caught, but uh, I've already had quite an eventful journey. I got to Euston in time to get the 9.10 train to Holyhead and found that that train had been cancelled and was now starting from Milton Keynes and so I had to get another train to Milton Keynes instead and change there. So I've just got onto the Holyhead train um, and it turns out that they're also going to be diverting the train between Chester and Crewe or Crewe and Chester and uh, so that's going to add another 40 minutes to the journey. So I'm hoping this isn't an omen of how everything's going to go for the next few days. Um, and I'm hoping I'm just getting all my bad luck out of the way now and everything's going to be completely marvellous once, if, no, once I finally arrive in Belfast. It's me, the toilet. I just wanted to ask if you might mind not flushing wet wipes, sanitary towels on that piece. The usual stuff's totally cool. I mean, I knew what I was getting myself yeah, into when I applied to be a bed. toilet. Please take care. Yeah, it's a great job. You know, we I used to be in public toilet. Journey. Let me tell you, this is a step up. Uh, anyway, yeah. Carry on. Toilet door is not locked. Attention. Thought you would all enjoy that little uh, audio collage there. Um, I'm being slightly uh, sonically tortured at the moment. <laughs> that was the toilet on my Virgin train that I'm currently on, um, which is now severely delayed. So it's an hour and a quarter late, and um, I hope we're going to get to Hollyhead in time to get the ferry, um, as well as a chirpy, matey talking toilet. There's train announcements all the time telling us all about being late. And there's also a woman in my carriage with a small dog called Edith who keeps um, escaping from her and hiding under people's seats. And then the woman walks up and down the aisle shouting, Edith, Edith, where are you? So not the most peaceful journey I've had at the moment, uh, but I'm sure it'll all be worth it when I get there. Oh, I forgot to say, but the inside of the doors in the toilets is a very snazzy nitrile glove purple, so I'm pretty pleased about that. So, a bit more drama on this journey. Um, the train manager just made an announcement to all the passengers just now, saying that um, although our severely delayed train is going to arrive 15 or 20 minutes before the ferry leaves there's a chance we might not actually be able to get the ferry because Irish ferries who operate it are supposed to close the check-in desk 40 minutes before it leaves and he said they're refusing to keep it open so um, they might transfer us to a ferry that leaves six and a half hours later um, in which case I'm not sure if I'll get to Belfast tonight but I'm doing my best 
Um, on the other hand, the man behind me is phoning up Irish ferries now to see what their story is direct. So uh, there's every chance that the passengers might just rise up and revolt and <laughs> commandeer the ferry. <laughs> and, uh, in that case, yeah, we'll definitely be there. So I'll keep you posted. Guess who's standing in a queue? That's right, it's Chloe. Oh, and wait! And Jenny! <laughs> We're on the same flight. We're so excited. We did not plan this, by the way. Uh, it was entirely an accident that we're on the same flight. Turns out it's a convenient time for conservatives <laughs> living in the north to go from this airport to Belfast at this particular time. Maybe there's more of us, I just don't know yet. Yeah, I keep looking at people. There's a woman knitting in front of me, and I thought, <gasps> is that a conservative? And then she said she was going somewhere else, so it oh, definitely is. Okay, fair enough. I didn't speak to her. I'm just earwigged on her conversation. <laughs> I was like, that was brave. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're stopping. <laughs> We're not sitting together. No, but because um, we didn't actually book this together. This was entirely an accident. So... Are we going to hold hands over the... Um... Oh, yeah, over the one row between us. Because <laughs> I'm in nine and you're in 11. <laughs> it's going to be really creepy and beautiful. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, I need to find my passport. That's a good plan. Have you got yours? yours? Yeah, it's in the Don't special oh, thing. She's got a travel, proper, like, tweedy travel wallet thing. Yeah, I think, it, I think I've it's just got a pockets wallet. and <laughs> chaos. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was in pockets and chaos, but this helps. <laughs> I like it. So the plane is nitrile purple. It is nitrile purple, everyone. It's also tiny and it has propellers and I'm frightened, but apparently, apparently it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's great. Purple, everyone. It's purple. <laughs> We're on Anglesey, which means we're only a few miles from Hollyhead, and the ferry isn't due to leave for another 25 minutes, so hopefully we'll make it if we can persuade the Irish ferries staff to let us on. Um, there's a lot of quite angry passengers here, um, armed with all sorts of suitcases and coffee stirrers and things, so I think there's every chance that we'll be able to overpower them and storm the ferry by force if necessary. Um, I have just remembered the time when my husband and I um, tried to drive the entire length of the A5 road from uh, London to Holyhead in a Renault 5. Um, we were young and liked doing road trips, so it seemed like a good idea at the time. But our Renault 5 broke down on Anglesey, just a couple of miles outside Hollyhead, um, and we had to be towed all the way back to London and never made it to Hollyhead. So I'm getting a slightly sickening sense of deja vu here. But uh, I'm thinking this is my chance to exorcise those demons and actually make it to Hollyhead this time. And I'm imagining, like, if this were a film, this would be the time I conquer that battle and against all the odds heroically make it to Hollyhead um, I'm like imagining myself in some sort of film called Hollyhead or Bust or something like that so wish me luck I'll update in 10 minutes I'm on an unbelievably windy deck of the ferry um, as you can probably hear from all the wind and machinery noise around me and so on but I am so pleased to be on the ferry that I don't care um, it's raining and drizzly and there's every chance I'm going to get blown overboard in a minute but I'm just delighted that uh, we managed to make it onto the ferry there was a big uh, scramble at Hollyhead as all of the passengers basically ran through the station and they put us on a coach and um drove us to the ferry port and didn't even stop for us to get out they just drove the coach onto the car deck and dumped us there um so yes i am on my way to dublin and from there i'm getting a train to belfast so i will report back in a bit but now i'm going back inside to see if i can sit down and relax and possibly have a drink We landed, we travelled, now we're walking. Walkie walkie. We are in Belfast, people. Very excited. I keep seeing people around and thinking, are they conservators? <laughs> How eccentric do they look? <laughs> we're very excited. We are on our way to our Airbnb, walking through central Belfast, and we are going to find some food. I have spoken to two people and I have embarrassed myself twice. I'm really regretting the purple, nitrile purple lipstick, I have to say. Jenny says it's fine. Jane says it's fine. We shall see. Um, okay, 
good times. Okay. We get locked in. Uh, then we'll set up the alarm. Right, so we just really, really we just <laughs> we just at the uh, opening reception at Ulster Museum, which is a fabulous museum, and now we're running around. We've had a couple of hours of just intensely talking to people oh, and sipping wine, and it's it's great. And I've met so many people, and thank you to everyone who's oh, come and said hello. Yes. Chloe's getting really distracted. Quickly, act normal. <laughs> I have Is there anyone to act normal uh, in a really two. empty gallery? <laughs> act normal, no one can see us. We, we've had a lovely time. And also, thank you to everyone who's come and talked to us. so much. And, like, said hi, or, like, given us episode topic ideas. Hi. Uh, we're starting to, starting, starting to close up. I've got a, got a few more minutes. But I'm just going to whistle around really quickly. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank, right. you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Right, let's find the map. Uh, I would like to say as well, I'm... Um, Overwhelmed by, overwhelmed and warmed by how um, kind of kind and generous everyone's been with chatting with us and talking to us about how they feel about episodes and offering time on the podcast as well. It's really, really nice, and I'm absolutely not used to the idea of being like recognized. known, recognized. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit. I mean. I try and act cool, but it's never been a skill. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just really, really, it's really lovely. It's really nice. And everyone's so supportive, and um, we've all had wine, so I'll stop talking now. It's ten to ten at night, and I have finally arrived. Um, sadly, a bit too late for the welcome reception. Um, I think it is still going on, but I couldn't quite face schlepping over there with my rucksack in the rain, so I have given that a miss. But um, I've arrived at the Airbnb that I'm sharing with Jenny and Chloe, and also with Jane Henderson and Phil Parks, so that's going to be fun. After the ferry arrived in Dublin, I had a very pleasant train journey to Belfast on a very comfy train, so that was nice. And then walked from there to the place where we're staying. So the whole thing, including all the walking, took me about 15 hours, I think, if you include when I left home in the morning and walked to the station in Cambridgeshire. And then the other end when I walked from Belfast, Lanyon Place, to the house where we're staying. So would I say that was worth it? Yes, I would, actually. I think it's a shame that I missed the welcome reception. I would have liked to go to that, but it's not the end of the world. But um, I feel really pleased that I managed to travel one way to the conference without flying. I am going to fly back because um, by the time the conference is finished, it's quite difficult to get a ferry back um, and timetables don't quite work out. But at least I managed to avoid that one way. So I feel really pleased about that. The journey itself was quite fun and it's really nice to travel by train and see the landscape changing as you go through different parts of the country and hear people's accents changing and arrive in Dublin and find that there's different currency and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it was fun and um, I would do it again. Day one. We're here. We're here. They've ordered run out of milk and the coffee. <laughs> so I'm drinking it black like my parents do. <laughs> do you have the bingo cards? I do. I need to find a place to put them, actually. I wonder where... Where do you think is a strategic location to put them? This is actually a lot more spread out than I thought it yeah. would be. Step, Step one. one. Try to get bingo cards out there, and then we'll see what happens. How are you feeling? I am sleepy, but not, it's not bad. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um getting there okay i'm a very slow morning person so i'm like oh this is so intense already i think i woke up anxious and i've just got more anxious from there yeah fair enough I i've mean, done the first thing i needed to do and now the talks start in five minutes and i whoo. feel a bit nervous right i have to say okay let's get some bingo cards <laughs> let's get some bingo cards okay right i'll take my one back there will be no sauntering here well we've just been asked to go back into the room and we were going to do some recording uh, so this is going to be briefer we've just attended the first plenary session 
Uh, it's good. Very really good. interesting. I'm yeah. really, we've just had three talks essentially on um, working with new materials, cleaning new materials, and I'm working with huge, work, huge things. Giant, and thinking huge about the future. Chips, chips, chips. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, I absolutely love it when people talk about how they broke best practice. I just find it the absolute, oh, absolutely, most heartwarming, hilarious thing ever. Absolutely. Because of course you will. Because that's that's life. That's yeah. real life situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, I I thought they were all really interesting. I need to learn things about gels. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. How are you? Hello. <laughs> Love it. That was very smooth. Hello, for your future. <laughs> I enjoyed the gels. Wasn't they satisfying? Beautiful. Yeah. This morning, the second plenary session is about to commence. Can we invite all the gels? Gels are amazing. The they're, getting, they're getting cranky. We definitely have to go inside now. I want to try gels. That was the good thing. Yeah. Dirty gel. Dirty gel. Dirty gel. Beautiful. Ellie, how, much, how did she manage to get so much science into so few minutes? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Impressive. It was amazing. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Really, really good. We're seeing a more open field that we can play in, essentially. And on top of that, just on a slightly more personal note, I'm starting to see more and more people of color in the field of conservation, you know, coming in at, at my level, at my age. And so that's really exciting as well, because it's just like, oh, yay, there's more of us out there. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely. And then having as well all these, all these conservators who've been in the field for uh, a while who are opening their doors to us and saying, hey, why don't you come in, talk to me, let's have coffee. Let me tell you a little bit more about what I do, and you can find out the expectations that are out there for emerging conservators. So I definitely think there's a lot to be said for just asking other conservators for help with their mm-hmm. advice. Um, and I think I was listening to one of the SeaWorld podcast episodes, um, and um, forgive me, I can't remember who said it, but um, someone made the excellent point of that although there are these very short-term contracts, maybe sometimes low-paying contracts, but the, the best way to make the most of it is to then talk to the employer to make sure that it's a two-way thing. The employer is getting whatever this short-term contract work is done, but then to talk about what skills you might want to enhance through that um, and see if that can be included in that work. So kind of thinking of it, of it as a two-way thing, that if you're going to employ someone for a short-term contract, you make sure that they will benefit from it as well mm-hmm. um, if you're looking to employ entry level people. Mm-hmm. Um, there was just one more point I wanted to um, bring up with, which is about um, names of, uh, of entry level jobs and how they are named and, and how you guys feel about um, positions like assistant positions or junior positions um, and whether they should be fixed term or permanent. And yeah, I don't know if you want, you want to. Well, I, I really like the term junior conservator. I have been volunteering at Brecknock Museum and Art Gallery for over a year now. I did my placement there last summer. And at the end of my placement, um, Kath Lloyd Haslam, who is a conservator there, she told me when I go to write this up on my on my um, CV, I shouldn't say conservation volunteer. I should say junior conservator. Um, because that's the quality of work that I was producing. And that's the expectations that she had of me while I was there. So I like the term because I think it... in. On the one hand, it masks the fact that it was a volunteer and unpaid position, which does tend to get frowned upon in some cases, or at least in, maybe not so much in conservation, but like in other fields, having worked in the government before, volunteering, not so great. But it also gives a bit of legitimacy, I suppose you could say, to what you've been doing as a volunteer. Um, You get taken a little bit more seriously. And in terms of paid positions, would anyone have something to say about that? I think think they're very good, like you say, assistant conservative positions as an entry way in um, they are more likely to give them to a less experienced um, <coughs> conservator um, whether they should be permanent or fixed term um, pros and cons I think long fixed term would be my preference um, so two two or three years because I think they are excellent positions in order to develop your skills but I think I, I'm kind of on the opinion if you're an assistant conservator after you've gained skills you should move on yeah. and become a fully fledged conservator and, uh, and give someone else the opportunity to go through the ranks um, mm-hmm. so I'm um, mm-hmm. yeah. point for that that's my view as well and in my institution we've um, been talking there's only two of us in a huge studio that does um, outside contract work in textiles and we've been talking about how how to both, both get more hands on deck basically but also how to make a positive impact into the conservation community and essentially what we came up with was junior position 
or you know as, uh, assistant position or any of those names that you like really I don't really I don't really feel it matters I just know that they're really important of a period of a year or two that is enough to get your teeth into it enough to feel established in that role and in that institution because that's something that I've only mm. discovered recently having been somewhere for the you know dizzy length of two years only it completely changes your outlook on a role and on your own position in the profession um, and that's what we identified as if we could manage that I do have something else to say later about um, icon internships but we can wait for that to come around naturally if you want to you bought it around that okay I bought it around naturally <laughs> segue uh, um, I suppose when when you sent the brief of what we'd like to achieve in this session we we wanted you wanted to achieve I suppose you wanted to be both positive and also come up with some real solutions to the problem because we we know it's rubbish we have all struggled and we've struggled for many years mm-hmm. at this point in our careers i in my institution it for the in the same kind of um thought process as trying to 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 get more hands and to make a positive impact um i actually called patrick um in icon and asked what's the situation with icon internships and i was very surprised to discover that unlike as i thought it was just some that appeared every year and this was a sort of long standing relationship with icon and the in, and separate institutions it's um a set almost almost a set amount of money and you can do it whenever you like and you it can be for um a, a number of different options of time period but you know 9 months isn't this necessarily the standard it can be a year or two and i was really surprised by that because i always had this kind of sort of mystical it's they just come out and then you apply for them and you don't get them and uh, i mean mostly um, <laughs> um, well, i didn't get one before i got well the other one. yeah um, and i feel that on that subject it's the and i think it's the the responsibility of institutions to really uh, apply for the funding it doesn't have to be it has to be paid for by the institution but it doesn't have to be paid for out of the pocket of the institution i think it's our responsibility as studios and and labs to apply for funding award the funding and then host interns and teach interns because it's not just the intern that gets stuff out of it and it's not just the time that you receive in in that respect it's also we, we had a, an icon uh, sorry we had a um a glasgow textiles intern in over the summer um and myself and my colleague were really struck by the impact that he had on us as a as a studio because students you know students have a totally different um outlook on how you approach projects and how you research and how you explore your different op- options and how you learn and i think that can really sort of spice things up if you've been i mean even just having been working for 5 years you get bogged down this I'm sorry it's it's taking ages <laughs> you get bogged down in the amount of time you don't have and the amount of money you don't have and all oh, there's all these projects and i don't have time to do this and i don't have time to make these improvements but with a student you I think that it sort of enlivens everything again. So I think it's not just we need to encourage as an institute as a as a um as a profession we need to encourage institutions to host interns and make that just a more standard more accessible thing for people to be able to to do like like you you found. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was just about to say we yeah, we're, we're running out of time so I think we're going to move to Oh, always sorry. Audience, so yeah, just because we started later. Okay, uh, I'm Susan Bradshaw, Head of Professional Development for ICON. Um, and I'm really pleased to hear your comments yeah. about uh, encouraging mm-hmm. institutions to apply for funding mm-hmm. to support it. I think it's about trying to get your institution to be creative in how they look for funding mm-hmm. and not necessarily just for the conservator element, but for a bigger picture. Uh, so that you're actually looking at sort of what projects are a bit around that, mm-hmm. you, that the institution would like to get the funding for, and then build in an internship within that, mm-hmm. so that it is a wider thing. And I am very keen to work with any institution that wants to apply for that type of funding. Uh, so please do knock on my door if you want to get that help because. The more internships that we can get, the better. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a legacy from the Heritage Lottery Fund 
money that I can't receive for nine years. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously now the numbers have dropped because we don't get the amount of funding uh, or hosts don't get the funding. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I'm really keen to keep pushing that forward. So, okay, so that's the first bit done. Day one, Emerging Professionals Network panel complete for me. That was my How first stressful thing, one number one. Really good. It was really good. Yeah. I think everyone was very positive and really eager to share experiences and stuff, which is really nice. I did feel I was a bit disappointed at the end because we got a bit sidetracked to be honest and to, to begin with we said we're not going to talk about accreditation because at this stage of people's careers yeah. it's frankly not relevant because people yeah. are focusing on paying their bills not how accredited they can be when you can't even be accredited up until five years yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then quite a lot of the conversation was focused on accreditation, and it's not a long thing. I was a bit disappointed about that because it wasn't the focus. It, it kind of it took away from discussions we could have been having about how to improve things for emerging professionals rather than, so after you've emerged, this is what you can do. Yeah, that's yeah. very nice, but it's not relevant. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the only thing. <laughs> but I thought the, the chair of that discussion was absolutely ace. Oh, um, good. And the other participants were Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, what, did you, what did you go to after lunch? Uh, right, so we should probably say that the morning was spent yeah. with two cleaner sessions and they were um, really interesting. They were quite yeah, sciencey. They were. And they were quite serious. They, there was well, the one that um, really sticks in my mind is uh, conservation in conflict zones. Yeah. I have to say I did shed a bit of a tear during that. It's, yeah. It's so... That was very emotional. heartbreaking, but heartwarming at the same time. Yeah, it was because of the work that people are doing and the honest, yeah, that was love awesome. people have for their collections that they're trying to protect and yeah, that and was save really, and rescue and stuff. That was really emotional. You could tell. Yeah. What did you attend after lunch? So after lunch, I went to the sustainability session, right? And then after that, I went to Modern Materials, where you were. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so the sustainability one, honestly, because we've done that episode, it was actually stuff I'd heard before. But, <laughs> but although, Listen to the episode. Oh, they covered very different bits. So one was about building, sustainable building heritage. That is only something I know about because I'm a huge building nerd anyway. You are. And then um, there was one about uh, decolonizing museums. So it was more sustainability than that, from that angle. Yeah. Which was good, but I already know tons about because I'm really on board with it. Yeah. And then it was... Uh, Caitlin, who uh, did the interview for our sustainability episode, the Going Green yeah. one. Uh, so that was stuff that I'd heard before, but it's really important to get out there. Yeah. So actually, it did cover things I already knew, but you, you know. didn't mind. No, I didn't mind. <laughs> oh, that's good. What did you go to? I went to textiles. Of course you did. Of course I did. Um, which was brilliant. Really, really interesting work on from um, Francis Leonard and Associates on um, stress in hung tapestries. Uh, of course I have a thing relevant. about hung, hung textiles so yeah. I was really interested in that. Um, and then a piece about South American textile fragments Ooh. and had been collected as examples of the textile craft um, and what to do with them and what to do to protect them during research and stuff which is really interesting and the only thing I'd say about that the session was that there were only three talks on textiles and two of them were about the same technology so oh, okay I I felt that we, I'd like to have heard maybe a bit about something else, maybe? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I really enjoyed all of them, and they were the, the, the two about the same technology were really different. Yeah. Um, I suppose with all these things, you never know how many people actually submitted something that would have fit in that slot. Yeah, no, know. that's true. That's true. But I think, I, I don't know, I think because I was trying to, because I'm not just textiles, that's the only textile yeah. one I intend to go to, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it will clash with, like, photography, for example. Yeah. I wanted... Variety, yeah. Um, and then we went to the modern. We materials. went to modern materials, yeah. which I really enjoyed. Me too. That was yeah. That was definitely a good session. Uh, it covered all sorts of things like biodegradable plastics, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, electrical wiring. Mm -hmm. uh, the electrical wiring one I found really really interesting, and the idea of replicating bulbs so that you 
have light properties but not heat properties. Really, very cool. Yeah. Um, and then the last one was about street art, which was very cool. Yeah, as well. yeah, that was cool. It was cool. more of an introduction to street art than it was about the conservation. Um, and it did have a slide in there about no, no, absolutely, kind of stuff you could do to stick them together. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> We're gonna go to our drinks thing now. Yeah, I think loads of different people are going because this is for. Um, yeah, this is instead. We did kind of invite everyone. We kind of invited everyone, <laughs> and I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, it's instead of the gala dinner, which yeah. I don't know how the percentage of people who aren't attending that, but everyone's like, oh, I, have, so I don't have money for that. <laughs> uh, I know there will be people yeah. going, but, you know. yeah. And if you went, let us know how it was. Yeah. I would like a review of the food. By the way, the lunch was lovely. Oh, it was the, lo- good. the lunch was really good. Good lunch food. It was like being in a proper... Yeah. Yeah, it was just really nice. Really, really good. It wasn't sandwiches. It was like proper hot food. Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah, loads of different options. So good. I had the chicken. I also had the chicken. Did it was you? really nice. The chowder smelled nice. It did. Yeah. I was tempted. Yeah. Oh, there is another thing. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Conservation by Design are here. Um, and they had a free gift for everyone. Oh, yes. And I've got mine here. I haven't opened it. It's a surprise for everyone. No one's really talked about what they are. Um, no, people have been very good at keeping the secret. Yeah. So it's, it's wrapped up in a little uh, acid-free grey box, as you would imagine, Indeed. with a, a cotton tape bow on it. And I'm opening it now. I don't know what it is. It seems quite supported in there. It could just be an internal box. It could be an internal you. box. Yeah. Like I, mean, I, I would love to wrap something in the shape of a bottle, and then actually turns out to be a pen. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That we did in the pack get a notebook and um, a tiny, adorable little um, oh, microcrystalline wax. That was so as cute. As though like you get artisan face cream. It was so cute. I really like it. Anyway, so, cute. Um, so I'm opening it now. What is it? One flap, two flap. Oh, it's concert. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so what it is? Oh, yeah. It's one of those. Oh my god, I'm gonna show my ignorance now. One of those brushes. That's really fancy. Oh, it's fancy. Um, how would you how would you describe this? I would describe it as. Uh, I mean. I think it's a Japanese style brush, but I'm yeah. not. I'm not off I was going to say because I want to say this is a Japanese brush. It's an animal hair brush, possibly goat. Yeah, I think this is goat. Yeah, and it's of the style of multiple different like you know the bunches. Ones, yeah, you know the ones that are like several kind of bamboo. It looks a bit like you know. pan pipes. Yes, but it's One a brush. One of those, but it's a brush. The pan pipes brush. It's very beautiful. I feel like everyone who works with their paper I've conservation now is going. <laughs> <laughs> Which is with fine. objects conserved is all right. Yeah. You can't know everything. We try, but I'm very excited about this. Really it's very nice. What a, it's very what lovely. A lovely. What a lovely movie. gift! Oh, it looks so nice. Oh. I'm oh. now forcing it back into its beautiful packaging, which yes. I will take a photograph of. Yeah. Oh, but and I've got a, a raffle ticket because apparently tomorrow they're um, oh, yeah. doing a raffle for Good all point. the stuff that they've got on their display. Yeah. I assume because they can't be asked to take it home, <laughs> which is fair. I definitely won't win anything because I never win anything. That's the rule. <laughs> I never win anything. So while Jenny is off paying very kindly for our lovely fish and chips we just had at the what's it called? The fish the fish place? The fish house? Something like that? The fish house I'm going to call it. While she's doing that I'm just going to quickly talk about a book that I've been given to re- review by the lovely Gwen Spicer. When I say lovely, she's super lovely. This woman is super lovely. And you've probably heard about this book, actually, already. She's done quite a bit of advertisement, but also it's quite... It's a really sort of relevant book of now, because it's on magnetic mounting systems for museums and cultural institutions. And I know we, as in Team Seaword, have definitely heard more and more happening with magnets in the in the profession so it's really timely so she's given this to me so that i can review it for her at which and the review will be published on the show probably in the winter time well so next season and just as an idea of the headings got early history of magnets permanent magnets etc etc so it's the, the, the sort of introduction section and then 
the behavior of gap materials oh and then testing a magnet system caring for your magnets which is really interesting because you don't really think about that that's 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 a separate issue but i certainly don't know how to do it um oh magnetized dust rare earth magnets and the global environment and then excellent so there's a whole section on case study groups which is really good because obviously that's how we get a load of our ideas is to copy other people that's how we work brilliant and then there's an appendix and a glossary which is really really good so i'm going to be doing a review of this for gwen which is so nice she bought this over from the states and she bought a number of them for interested people and so i'm so grateful to her for bringing this over for me um so i'll hope to do it justice so we're walking through belfast we're heading to granny annie's while we're doing our drinks which is going to be really nice and there are some other icon attendees behind us but we don't know them oh we've got it that's lucky because we were lost (laughs) we've got it we're here we found granny annie's sort of loomed up suddenly it's very painted on the outside oh there are people hi hi (laughs) introduce yourself please oh god okay my name is ali i'm a student at cardiff university that's fine. I don't know what else you want me to... No, that's fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> and you're here for the drinks with us? Yes. And maybe some dinner. Because oh, maybe food. dinner. Always food. What have you been up to for the last couple of hours? I just went back and I caught up with everything on Twitter that was happening oh, that good. I didn't oh, get yeah. to actually yeah, yeah. see. So, yeah, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. I haven't done that yet. It's quite overwhelming, isn't it? Oh, my God. My thumbs are sore. Yep. <laughs> my thumbs are sore from doing all day. <laughs> but great job sharing, everyone. Great job sharing. Brilliant job. Excellent tweeting, Ali. Well done. She's been live tweeting beautiful work you will probably have seen oh thank you very much i've had a lot of fun (laughs) oh my god i can hear myself (laughs) 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 better yeah okay thanks everyone for coming uh i mean i know that you guys organized it but still uh, (laughs) yay thanks for being here this is great (laughs) 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 we can't escape Noises. All authentic pub noises. We've been deafened <laughs> by a band inside for the last two, nearly two hours, and it's been intense. Uh, it's been really intense, and then we go outside for a piece of quiet, and they're playing on loudspeakers inside. <laughs> and I mean, it's all beautiful and wonderful and atmospheric, but um, it's, it's very nice music. Now. But yeah, okay, <laughs> great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you like noises, you're right. Yeah, yeah. 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 quite. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. How's everyone feeling about today? How did you find your first day? A little overwhelming. Yeah, okay. Really? Oh, yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lots of information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Information yeah. overload. That's fair. That's conferences for you. Yeah. 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 I found it really scary. Yeah. Didn't expect to be so massive. Just yeah. It is massive. Right. That's right. It's your first yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, me too. Is it everybody's first one at a big yeah. international yeah. conference? First yeah. Yeah. Icon conference. Second. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. old. <laughs> <laughs> What was your favorite bit? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can get that much of the so food. Much <laughs> the food. Oh, oh, I really like the amazing. free presents. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
and it took the guy like five seconds to twiddle around with the buttons. Oh yeah, because the uh, microphone, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And also the screen wasn't showing. We also had like a slight technical thing with the screen, and his magic man like, just appeared, and it was all oh. fine. <laughs> I'll just have what do you mean do with our talk? USB that's I'll great. Go, oh, I've got my yeah, that's all right. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're magic man. Yeah. yeah, the magic <laughs> man. Whoever <laughs> <laughs> the, the magic man is, the magic man sorts it. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I'm really nervous. Jenny, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. I know you are. And I am too. So we should probably explain that we don't normally do talking no. in front of a live audience. I mean, we have at that panel that we did in November. Yeah, that was also scary though. That was also very scary. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we just don't normally do I'm it. I feel a bit be... bad for being nervous because I've realised I'm, I'm not like, I'm not helping you. I don't I'm really just... feel like I need help, but thank you. Um, <laughs> That wasn't to be in a smug way. It was more like, it's not on you to look oh. after my well-being. Bless you. Can you look after my well-being? Um, Is that all right? I, I am already trying. <laughs> you are. It's not really doing She's anything. She's doing so well. It's not really doing anything. We're all trying. <laughs> so last night, Christina and Jenny had like a full-on chat with me about my worries and what I was scared about. It and was I was like, like, no, it's genuinely unnecessary worrying this is, it was a this full is irrational worry <laughs> therapy intervention was what it was but yeah I don't do this very well but but you I dance mean, on stage great. yeah but I don't have to speak yeah but you but you have run a podcast yes but we do that in the comfort invisibly. of invisibly yeah yeah not quite um, like most conservatives Oof. we are creatures of habit and creatures we habit. enjoy our own Solitude. little nests <laughs> <laughs> that we build carefully yeah um, but no, this will be fine. This will be fine. I need a sedative. <laughs> it would be good. Yes, it will be good. And we know our subject. We know our subject. It's gonna yeah, be. it's fine. It's totally fine. Totally I mean, fine. it never helps when people say it's going to be fine. No, but I think I'm going to go get a glass of water. That is actually a very good. Plan. I try not to be sick. Those are both very good plans. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the C Word, the Conservatives podcast. Uh, today we are unusually talking to a room full of conservatives. Before I go on, I should say that we are recording some bits of audio from this talk, but we won't be using any of the bits that you might say, so don't worry about it. This is a little bit strange for us because uh, normally we use an invisible audience uh, and a rigorous uh, filter of editing, but we're going to introduce ourselves, uh, talk a bit about what we do, what we hope to do, uh, and also ask you guys some questions. Um, and because this is live, we're going to try to be on our best behaviour and not swear. But, um, I basically can't promise anything. <laughs> I'm Jenny Matthijsen, an object conservative based in South Yorkshire. I'm a Swedish export and currently work in a local authority museum uh, with all your usual mixtures of materials. That's natural history, archaeology, social history, world cultures, art, and a military collection to boot. I'm their only conservator, and I run the control <coughs> unit, Clifton Conservation Service, that's part of my job there, and it is a unit of one. As far as the podcast goes, I'm one of the hosts, the social media wizard, the illustrator, uh, and also the main editor. And once a month, we convert my living room into the primary recording studio. Hi, I'm Chloe Ramsey, an objects conservator based in Greater Manchester. Um, I work in a fairly small museum in central Manchester with a very large conservation studio that specialises in large textile conservation. You probably know it. Um, my museum is a museum of political history and we collect contemporary material all the time. Um, so that means that all the plastics are my problem. I've, I've done my job. They're my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the only belly dancing conservator in the country and possibly in the world, um, and I'm honestly eagerly waiting for someone to challenge me on that. So if you know of any others, then I, we need to be friends. I also I joined Jenny in uh, her living room studio for development and recording, as she's just said. Um, I'm an ideas girl, so I come up with the episode topic sometimes, interview questions, and um, sometimes dopey artwork ideas as well for Jenny. I'm Christina Rizek, an objects conservator based in Cambridgeshire. Um, I've always had my finger in lots of pies, um, combining bench work with 
active teaching and research. Um, as I'm now a middle-aged mum, I really value job flexibility, so I'm currently working part-time as a research strategy coordinator in the university, which pays the bills and allows me to do just the fun bits of conservation instead. My job in the podcast is to be the old fart, really, <laughs> and uh, I quite enjoy coming up with scandalous comments to shock the young ones over here sometimes. <laughs> um, I particularly love interviewing people, so I'm often found somewhere in the field with a microphone asking random conservators all about their projects. And if you would like to be interviewed about something you're doing, come and ask us. We'd love to hear from you. I'm the podcast's southern outpost, um, and so while Jenny and Chloe are recording from Jenny's living room, um, I'm recording my part of the podcast from my own study. Uh, while my children are bound and gagged in a corner somewhere. <laughs> and if you hear any squabbling about Lego in the background, I'm afraid that would be from my side of the podcast. The SeaWorld team, um, we're also very, very lucky to include Benjamin Fox, our very own sound engineer, and Jimmy Potter, um, as well as the infamous Jane Henderson, who... No. <laughs> Um, who's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, who's our very own conservation agony aunt and does a fantastic job of answering all of the questions that people sent for her. And together, we are the C word. Um, could everyone who's heard of us please raise your hands? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you all know where we're coming from then and everyone else will have a pretty strong idea in about 15 minutes or so. So we are a podcast about conservation um, in mostly, but not just, museums, and we try to cover a huge number of topics and issues. From the beginning, our goals have been openness, inclusion, and honesty. We want to talk about issues that affect us all in the profession, and to advocate for all of the great work that we do, and to highlight some of the ways in which we struggle. We never anticipated the reception and support that we've gained over the last two and a half years, but we always hoped that we would facilitate others to be able to speak out and to share themselves and their work with the wider community. Um, I said we're talking about openness and honesty, but you'll have noticed that we try not to name our employers. <laughs> um, and when we started, we did consider whether we should just be completely anonymous, in fact. Um, we have things to say, sometimes slightly controversial things, and we didn't want to feel that we had to censor ourselves in any way. And we chose what we have now as a healthy middle ground to be open about who we are, but to be quite circumspect when we're talking about institutions and employers. Um, we take responsibility for what we say, we're not ashamed of it, and we don't think anyone else in the profession should be either. But on the other hand, we're not about to start ignoring our employers if we don't have to. So podcasts have become huge in the last 10 years. Even people with no interest in the digital world will probably have been swayed into listening to a podcast at some point. Uh, and clearly, <laughs> quite a lot of you have heard of us. Um, this is obviously great because it means that there are forums for the discussion of pretty much any topic you can think of, um, any industry, any activity, any product. This is a huge boom for learning and skill sharing. So one of the really famous general interest ones is Hello Internet, um, and there it's the hosts that are sort of the main draw. People are really listening to hear them and hear their conversation. On the other hand, there are ones which are also general interest ones like the Guardian Long Reads podcast, where the audience is on board for learning about issues and histories rather than just the hosts per se. Um, it's pretty difficult to research very niche podcasts, of course, but there are things like The Pen Addict, they talk about fountain pens, and Reasonably Sound, which is a sound design podcast. Um, for anything you're interested in, probably there's a podcast of somebody talking about it. Given the size of our audience, we're doing pretty well, and we normally average at about 500 downloads in our first week of release, and of course that increases all the time as people discover us or go back to revisit topics. And to date, we've had more than 60,000 downloads. So this is slightly my fault, sorry. Um, I started thinking about creating a podcast for conservatives back in about 2012 or so. Uh, this was back when I was a student, and as a student, I was looking for conservation contents in ways that were familiar to me. So that tended to be online platforms. I really thought the uh, profession could engage with everything from like memes to YouTube content, but even now there is a certain reluctance to do so. 
Are we all getting that? Uh, Chloe and I met in Cardiff, as all of you will know, uh, uh, whilst we were studying, and then we joined forces again uh, in Cambridge. And this is, of course, where we met Christina. Uh, and the team really came together. Uh, she was just as keen and slightly insane um, as we were about talking uh, conservation. Also, she wasn't immediately terrified by microphones, which was a huge bonus. We actually recorded our pilot in March 2016, but then we had a little break because of house moves and new jobs after life of short-term contracts. Um, but this month we actually launched the show in early 2017 uh, with our episode about demographics. We knew from the get-go that we really wanted to explore all sorts of topics, uh, that we definitely just didn't want to cover things like treatments, that, that's fine, but other people do that. We wanted to talk to people from the very beginning of their careers through the mid-career and more seasoned conservatives. So what does the process of making an episode actually look like? Well, normally we record once a month on a Sunday, because that's the most convenient day for all of us. We do two episodes back to back. Chloe comes to my house, where the C-word HQ is set up for the day. Uh, usually there is pizza involved, or chippy, it depends. Um, and Christina joins us via WhatsApp. Uh, we've decided on topics, but we really try not to share notes beforehand. That way you get our actual reactions when someone brings something up on the show. Each episode is about one and a half hours before we start editing, and that's before we add extra features and things like the intro and outro. So we do tend to go for quite a while once we start talking. So that's the three of us, but if you're a regular listener, then you will know that there are other voices on the show, uh, aside from lovely Jane Henson. Uh, we often have interviews or guest hosts, and sometimes we get people sending us voice clips with reviews or other content as well. A uh, special shout out to people following us on Facebook and Twitter, who also interact plenty, and we do tend to read our comments and stuff on the show. Uh, and of course, we couldn't keep this show running if it wasn't for the people who support us on Patreon, so a special thank you to you guys as well. So why did we do it? Conservation is a wonderful field and we love it, but we know that there are things we can do better. For us, the show is about putting a public voice to both the good and the bad things in conservation. With it, we can talk to people from all stages of their careers, and as we know, getting the conservation conversation started is a crucial step to improving things. I chose the artwork for this slide because employment is, in my opinion, one of the most important issues that we face, and it just sums it up really amazingly. But there are solutions that we can find to this problem as a community, if we try. We've taken a similar approach to plenty of other subjects. Thank you. As regular listeners will know, we've had uh, conservatives becoming parents, working with sexual collections, sustainable practice in the workplace, um, health and safety, and so many others. Uh, not every episode pushes the boundaries, but we're proud of, uh, to, um, to have covered the topics outside the comfort zone of other publications. Um, and if there's a topic that you are thinking of and you'd like to suggest, please do so. As a community, we have ICON and other professional bodies around the world, um, journals, the Dissolist, so on and so on. Um, but I think we're all starting to see the potential that modern media has to bring us closer together as a community. The media landscape has changed quite a bit over the last decade or two, um, and as a profession we need to embrace that and not shy away from it. To some extent we're doing that already. Uh, webinars are increasingly popular. Twitter, there's a few podcasts that you might like in conservation as well. And as we heard earlier, you, um, videos of treatments, which is a really exciting idea. That said, we should be only. <laughs> that said, we should be aiming to do more, not as in we need to go viral, but in terms of sharing our knowledge with each other in new ways. Today's conservatives can't all come to far-flung conferences or workshops, and if we figure out platforms like YouTube, um, we can start solving that problem. Modern media isn't just outreach; it's also talking to each other and strengthening our social connections. With our podcast, we want to share stories and struggles and discoveries and developments. To be able to reach conservatives around the world is a huge privilege. 
we would like to take this opportunity next to ask the, uh, to ask the profession what else we can do. So when you see in the next three slides, um, have a think about what you might, might like to add to them. So before we arrived here in Belfast, we asked across social media what people thought the profession needs and what the areas of change need to be. And these are some of the answers that we got. So looking at this, is there anything that any of you would like to add? Feel free to shout out. <laughs> we should warn you that we are going to have some kind of element of interaction in this. Yeah. Right, well, thank you everyone so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Shout out to the people who made it possible to come here. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you, guys. Squirming, and it was like, <laughs> it's uh, great. I, I, I just appreciated the fact that we had like speakers that are willing to say things like that. Yeah. Because as a as a brown person in a predominantly white field, you look around, and you're like, well, I'm the only one. Yeah. But then when you hear somebody else talking about, we do need to diversify. Correct. That's oh, just so great. It's, yeah. I, yeah. I really appreciated it. It is. So. It was empowering. It was it, nice. Yes, it was. It's exactly the right word. It was empowering. What's yeah. been your favorite bit? Uh, I think. A mix of kind of hearing everyone's experiences of fixed term contracts nice. um, and kind of Good point. that reassurance of it's okay. Yeah, this it's is really common. Hard. Yeah, and even just hearing everyone talking about that and that being okay. But also, there's been a lot of stuff on people like with so many people saying I'm not a conservative, but as someone who does collections care and is not a qualified conservator, I always end up scouting myself as well. But like actually hearing a lot of people saying no preventative conservation that still counts. Yes, and kind of. Very much have does. quite the same titles and fancy things, but yeah, that kind of reassurance of everyone else. Good. Thank you. Good answer. Great job. <laughs> Emily, what's oh. been your favourite thing about the conference? I know you've only been here today. Uh, favourite thing? Does it have to be conservation specific or can I say the lunch? Of course you can. The lunch it's cracking. The lunch was much better than in Birmingham. It was really good. Um, and I really enjoyed Emily Yates' presentation on the one collection move. Oh. Because serious no seriously, the fact that they're embracing the technology, making their lives easier, I've done other moves projects where I wish we had done that. Real. Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. That was good. And What's been your favourite bit? Um, I really like the visits because lots of people have been here on their own. And I think it's a really nice point. Yeah, people hate networking. Networking. Yeah. networking. And people just ended up chatting. And that's a really good point. Themselves. People I have been really, really, really complimentary about them. So yeah. that seems to have gone over really well. Yeah. So that probably would Which one did you take to? Falls if we're doing it. Oh, yes. Related. Well, fair. I'm a massive fan now. Fair. Yeah, same which tour did you go to? Um, I did Ulster Folk and Transport Museum, and I now have about 800 photos of all kinds of mechanised animals. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. What's been your favourite thing about the conference? I well, a couple of presentations in the breakout room. Been oh, you like the breakout room? That's yeah. good. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, my first time at an icon conference. Well and done. Thank you. And presenting as well. Fantastic. And I'm doing it in my home country, which is so like yeah, lots of layers of like nice things. Um, so I think I've been doing it with my pal. Yes. So Teamwork. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's Excellent. My favorite thing. Did it go well? Yes. Apparently. Yes. <laughs> yes that's the thing. People know about it. Yeah. People. People applauded. Great. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, in that case, very well done, both of you. Brilliant. Uh, I think my favorite part, generally in the conference, I think it's been. The 
amount of discussion about diversity. Yes. That's been really nice to see, I think, especially like coming from backgrounds that are not, you know, traditionally, you know, what we see as a traditional conservation background. It's been nice to kind of see the diversity, whether it's like, um, yeah, it already exists. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and and the discussion and the kind of the Anne Tonkin's talk was just. Um, really honest it was it was really honest and I think it was um, important to have a talk like that yeah yeah it was a, really, uh, definitely a lot more of it, yeah. yeah excellent great stuff um, can I'm, we ask you what's, well, your, what's been your favourite thing about the conference the friendliness of oh, everybody oh, that I've really met so many people wow so that was a very full on day. That was a really full on day. But really lovely. I'm so tired. I am very tired. Everything but, hurts. But that could have had something to do with the fact that we didn't sleep very much because <laughs> we stayed up all night talking about very fighty conservation things. Yeah, we did. With Jane Which Henderson. Is, yeah. Yes. <laughs> surprise, the, surprise. <laughs> Phil the Park. slight danger of sharing an Airbnb with other conservatives <laughs> is if you end up hanging out. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that, obviously, because it's lovely. But wow, it does. I'm so tired. It's very difficult to stop. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Well, it's because we care. And then, oh, my yeah. God, it's one o'clock. Oh, yeah, my God, yeah. it's half past one. Yeah. Okay. But I suppose that's, you know, the good thing about talking to other people who are equally fighty and or oh, opinionated yeah. and oh, or yeah. passionate. As, as we saw at the end of this. Yeah. End of this. But let's talk about the beginning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. The so morning. Yes, the morning. What did you go to? I went to the new conservative session uh-huh. uh, because Christina was giving the morning talk. Yes. I really wish And Jane was that. chairing it. So it was really good. Uh, it was really brilliant. And she is going to hopefully publish um, so looking stuff forward on it. to that. She but should. basically she'd gathered like 11 years worth of data on like an insane amount of jobs. Oh my god. It was just I know, crazy and amazing and uh, some really interesting trends that she could that she could see. Uh, I'm not going to ruin it. You can look it up on Twitter frankly. Uh, maybe I'll link you to some good summaries. Uh, the other, the rest of the session was also really good mm-hmm. um, about internships and about the challenges of working on really huge things like ships and how it can be really difficult to find mm-hmm. the right people for for the kind of job. I went to the photography one. Oh, the nice. photography one with three talks on different types of photography conservation. Oh, that's cool. And I went because I'm objects, but I've got so many different... I don't really believe in special. I've just talked about this. I don't really believe in specialism. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Because I have all the fucking objects to look after. And <laughs> I don't know how to do photos. All those different things. Cons- yeah. Conservation, I don't know how to do all sorts of things. Yes, yeah, so it was mainly about glass plate negative... Well, there was one about glass plate negative conservation, which is fascinating. Cool. And then a uh, um, um, plastic, essentially plastic mm-hmm. um, negative conservation, so acetate and cellulose nitrate. Yeah. And then the first one was about uh, loaning very sensitive types of photographs <laughs> cool. um, and how you can kind of protect against the different forms of deterior, different uh, routes of deterioration. With That's cool. Essentially, really, really like demandy requirements okay. so I think it was very interesting yes yeah, so and then so, it was yeah and then session. it was the break and then it was our session which we were terrified about so it, terrified it was it was a good session it um, was a really good session so before us we had two people from the um, British Light Room oh yeah yeah and uh, they were talking about training, training which was really interesting Yes, to be modular. Yeah, modular training, really, really interesting. Mm. We're all familiar with training, but so we don't really talk about it, or we don't really consider it as a special well, thing that we do. Okay, no, I think that nobody's ever taught me how to train people. Okay, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that is not something that is covered, and I, yeah, I'm firmly against saying be. that it in any way is discussed how you are going to communicate yeah, yeah, things yeah. to people who aren't conserved. It's like that's not a thing. Yeah, like, no, that okay. it's not something that's covered, and I think that. It's frightening how people think that you just know how to do that. Yeah. That's why I find it super challenging to go into a teaching environment and try oh, yeah, to and like talk to everything. How from, do I present from, this information? From front yeah. of house members to uh, I don't know, very obstinate collection staff. <laughs> you know, like, it was just like oh my god, I don't know how to do this. Uh, so I, yeah. it was really nice to just kind of see a, a yeah, just have definitely. have another. Yeah. Team's perspective on it. It was good. And then after her, I think I have to say, the one Helen is afterwards. Swan's developing partnerships and cascading um, expertise in a challenging environment, talking about the Southwest um, and working over 
loads and loads of different museums. Yeah. I wish that I had seen that talk at a different time because I don't think I took it in as much as I could have done yes, because I kept true. getting little like panic. It helped me because I actually swore. already knew about the project oh. because I, they were all the presenters at the Nats oh, Con- that, Conservation okay. Conference. That's really cool. Um, it's really cool. It's basically helping museums with no more specialist staff look after the natural history collections, and it's really cool. They're going to publish. They're going to publish a handbook about it, oh, and that's so going to be cool. really cool. Um, and obviously, people in the room were a bit worried, you know, mm-hmm. like, well, what about volunteers doing stuff that we should be doing? Mm-hmm. But actually, it sounds like the guidelines are really, really firmly. You don't do any of these things because you need a conservator to come in. Right. But these are the things that are safe to do and that you should be doing to look after your things. And I just really appreciated that take mm-hmm. on it yeah. because we've got to realise that not everyone can afford a conservator no, exactly. and, uh, yeah. and also we should not work for free <laughs> so exactly. those are both things um, but yeah, no it was really good to see and then it was us and that was uh, what did you think about it? It was good. I mean, I'm very nervous, public I'm speaker. so nervous. Very nervous. But it went, it went really well. There weren't any technical glitches or anything. It was it was good. Yeah. And it worked pretty seamlessly. It did. It um, did. And then everyone was really nice and uh, participated when we wanted answers to Yeah, our, that was like, really nice. Our questions to the audience. And people asked nice questions. Yeah. And I was really happy with how many people made comments when we asked yeah. for ideas and stuff. Although I had to um, say, I was quite frightened when I got up because when we when the session started it was a, not an empty room at all but like it was more like it was half full at best and I was like oh that's that's nice and relaxed yeah, I can't yeah. I can this. <laughs> and I go up and I turn around <laughs> and the room was so full people were standing and I was like, <laughs> so people had filtered in um, um, I think people were moving about a lot I think yeah. they did that a lot today because yes. they wanted to see lots of different no, and they, they definitely but did yesterday as well point, there was yeah. a lot of oh, okay. around, which was you know really nice at some point though though it just filled and there were loads of people standing at the back and loads of people like sitting at the sides and stuff and all the seats were and taken. suddenly I was like, holy oh. shit, what? Hi. Uh, hi, thanks very much for but coming. Thank, yeah, no, really, yeah. thank you for coming. It was really nice. It was really nice to see you I all. was a bit disappointed that... No, not disappointed. I mean, it was a bit... It's, it's a bit of a shame that we didn't um, ask people whether they would mind their contributions being included because it was... They were all so nice and lovely, but I know why you said that we weren't going to include... So we said we wouldn't include their contributions in the recording and I think that is a good thing because it means that people feel more free to make comments yeah I mean you don't want them so to that's more like valuable than us having a you know nice episode yeah but, but I did it's feel still like, a nice oh, it's still you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it's a it, fair point yes um, <laughs> but no I think you definitely did the right thing I just thought oh this would be so nice to capture on audio but oh yeah, yeah. well yeah. Um, another time <laughs> And then um, towards the end, people just started saying really, really supportive things about how much they loved I know, the podcast. Really nice and they could support us in any way. And then, and then, um, and then they gave us more applause. Which exactly. Was yeah. Just and then, the most stupendously yeah. beautiful thing ever. It was. Yeah. And, it was. Uh, we were all very embarrassed. And I think someone afterwards said, "Well, you would be true friend." And I was like, "Well, that is my response to being complimented." <laughs> it was the extra applause that got me. Sorry. Um, anyway, so I nearly cried, and it was like, "Oh God!" It was really touch and go. <laughs> and then, and then we stayed and talked to people for, for a long time, which was very nice. And then we eventually went and had lunch, and then the afternoon session started, which was uh, all plenary sessions, and they were really, really good. The excellent. entire afternoon was really Truly good. Truly excellent. I think my favourite bit was the first bit in the afternoon because they yeah. were really solid ones. Because I guess there were things that kind of appealed to me in that they were emerging professionals. Yeah, emerging um, professionals network. Then talking we- about their survey, and then there was um, well, Leanne was next, wasn't she? Yeah, talking about mid-career issues, I suppose, is a is a good way to sum it up. And diversity. Yes, yes, uh, being working class and all that stuff, and mm. it was really, really important. And I'm sure it made loads of people uncomfortable in the room. Which I is, hope it did. Which is entirely the point. Yeah. You know, like not all of these things are going to be comfortable to talk about, and that's where it's at. Um, and then we rounded off with uh, Jane talking about Love Jane. Uh, <laughs> loads of things <laughs> about what, whose cake it is and yeah, stuff like that perceptions like, of heritage and gate being not being gatekeepers yeah, and what and we can do you know what it is we're trying to save and all that stuff and it was it was really good and then 
after but after, should, after tea break. Can I say another thing that nearly made me cry? Yes. Um, that our logo is the C word. We were included in um, successful inclusion projects oh, by the was emerging really, professionals, really nice. and they had really, us on really the big screen. Nice. And I was like, I'm too, I'm too emotional from earlier. This, I can't <laughs> handle it. Thankfully, no one saw. Yeah. Sorry, so, carry on. That was good. That yes. was really nice. Uh, tea break. They they had a raffle outside. The conservation by design had a raffle, and then. Uh, we all got back in here for the next plenary session, mm-hmm. uh, which included lovely Janet Berry. Um, and then Siobhan, oh, yeah, and then Siobhan did a of talk, course. which was great, except unfortunately she had some technical issues with her slides. Yeah, but she, she really soldiered on. It was really impressive. Yeah, she still delivered a great talk. It just yeah. didn't have the visuals. Exactly. And then we had Deborah Hess Norris, which was an absolute legend. And she played us in Beatles music as well, which she can get massive points for. Yeah, and that was about um, kind of collaboration, and it's going to be really difficult to summarise it, but collaboration and, and outreach and all the things that we can do could, to like, yeah, teach people that we exist. Yeah, con- contact. It, it kind of made me feel like we could be superheroes. Yeah, it did. That yeah, was I a think, good feeling. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then we had a closing keynote on climate change, which, which was really important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Jane Thompson Webb round, uh, like rounded off the entire Summed thing. It up. And, yeah, it was good. And that was it. And we've kind of sped up from our ramblings of just now because um, we are the very, room is very, now empty. very aware the room's empty. empty. And the building's leave. probably being locked. And my bag we is really, really need to leave now. Um, oh shit! I've got two hours to get to the airport. Well, I only have an hour, oh, so no. okay, we're gonna. I'm back from the ICON conference now after a much smoother journey home. Um, I didn't come back this time by ferry and train. I flew like everybody else. And uh, gosh, what a conference it was. Um, It's been a bit of a whirlwind couple of days. I unfortunately missed the final plenary session, but was able to go to the one before that And for me, that had two of the most outstanding talks of the whole conference, the ones by Leanne Tonkin and Jane Henderson. Um, I thought they were both really excellent, thought-provoking talks, and I hope that they both do something with those thoughts and make them more widely available to people who weren't at the conference. Um, In terms of the other talks on the first day as well as the plenary sessions I went to the sessions about leadership um, both of them there were other um, talks on more subject specific topics as well but I felt that the real value for me was being able to go and reflect about things that were sort of common to the whole profession Um, things like leadership and advocacy and communication and so on, rather than going to sessions that were just about practical skills or particular materials or so on. But obviously the other sessions were also quite well attended. Um, There were some great thoughts in those sessions as well. And I think they kind of really highlighted what I thought some of the common themes in the conference were for me. I found there was a lot of talk about leadership and conservators stepping up to take more responsibility and how we can develop the kind of skills that we need to become effective leaders and advocates for the profession. So I thought that was very encouraging. There was a lot of talk about communication and how we can communicate effectively. So not just putting words out there, but actually using those words effectively to persuade and influence other people. I thought there was a lot of discussion also about diversity that was really one of the themes that underpinned the whole conference for me and that was both how we can get more diversity entering into the profession but also as Leanne's talk touched on how we can ensure that we remain a more diverse profession as well so not just ticking particular demographic boxes to make sure that we're not excluding people from particular groups from coming into the profession but also making sure that we have diversity of thought and diversity of outlook and approach within the profession and I think that's something we don't talk about enough and I really hope that Leanne has started something with that conversation. Um, There was also quite a bit of a discussion I thought about modern materials, digitisation, time-based media, um, a recognition that conservation's not just about conserving the tangible but that we have intangible heritage whether that's um, things like digital 
assets or whether it's actually things like cultural practices. And um, as Jane talked about, the non-tangible aspects of an object that are at very grave risk of being dissociated from the object if we don't take care to conserve them. So, yeah, it was a very um, stimulating couple of days. I didn't manage to talk to as many people as I'd hoped to, but I personally did some very useful networking, so that was good. I've got a couple of good professional leads off the back of that. And um, it was really fun. I think it, it felt as if it felt more mature than the other icon conferences I've been to. And I think it's a really sort of positive indication that the profession's starting to come into its own and we're starting to ask the really big tough questions and we're not all just sitting there at our workbenches concentrating on the most effective adhesives for solving very specific particular problems we're actually starting to take a more holistic approach so yeah bring it on uh, icon 2022 oh gosh okay i'm finally home uh i had a bit of an adventure getting back actually I did have a really, really good time at the Steam Jazz Night that was at the end of the conference. So after uh, Chloe and I recorded that little bit that we've we've heard, then Chloe rushed off to get to her plane. Uh, Christina had already run off and uh, I ran out into the pouring rain to get to my B&B and um, just dump my stuff, switch into a slightly nicer set of clothes and then run back out into the rain and go to the station where the steam train was supposed to go from. It was really, really fun. It was um, not something I'd ever done before, which was the whole point of me wanting to do it, really. Uh, it was a bit of a silly indulgence, I suppose, but it was really, really good. Um, basically, we all went on a train, an old-timey steam train, and... Uh, at regular intervals, we stopped and offloaded a jazz band who played music on the platform and people got out and danced. It was just really nice. There was wine, there was chicken salad, there was more wine, there was beer available, but there was mostly wine. It was really nice. Uh, there were loads of people from the conference, obviously, that was the point, um, that some people I hadn't talked to before, uh, I had a chance to catch up with and also reconnected with some uh, people I'd talked to already or people I already knew. It was just really nice, a really good mix. And everyone was really relaxed and silly and danced and had fun. And at the end, we also got to look around the engineering works for the kind of steam line. And it was just really fun, really goofy. Just loads of conservators, just having a really good time. It was absolutely lovely. So thank you to everyone who organised that. It was so, so good. So much fun. So the next day, I had planned to walk around Belfast and have a bit of fun, but it was really, really rainy. So ultimately, I just went to find some breakfast and then I made my way to the airport because my flight was around five o'clock. So I was hanging out with some of you guys at the airport, which was also really nice. And then my flight got delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed so my 515 flight became a 10 to 9 flight and by the time we landed there were no trains that could get me anywhere so i slept on the floor in the airport that was good good times very very um either good or bad for your back depending on how you like your floors but anyway that was a bit of an adventure so i managed to get home Today is Sunday, as I'm recording this, and I managed to get home this morning uh, around 10-ish. And I have done a lot of napping. I look forward to sleeping in a bed. It will be all good. Uh, I did have a very good conference, though, so that's all good. Oh, thoughts about the conference. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. I could have done with more regular snacks. <laughs> I'm always going to go to food. I think I just needed there to be slightly more during the tea breaks because the biscuits were lovely, but biscuits are pretty much just sugar. I could have done with more fruit bowls around or something just so I could keep my blood sugar up a bit. But uh, the, the catering was amazing. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone has already said so, but the catering was amazing. I feel like uh, there was a bit of a hairy arm situation, like a hairy arm we've talked about before on the show. Uh, basically something that you leave in a photo to be able to complain about it 
<laughs> and the hairy arm for the conference was possibly the lack of cake or dessert because I did see people tweeting about it. How how was there no cake? How are we talking about cake in the keynotes? <laughs> and there is no cake. But the, I know for a fact that the catering company does do excellent desserts. It's just that we didn't have them. <laughs> but uh, I didn't mind the lack of cake, to be honest. Uh, cake, I can take it or leave it, but I could have done with slightly more in the terms of snacks. More snackage. The actual conference overall was really, really good, but I have to say that it was possibly a slightly too tightly packed schedule. Not, I mean, these things are always going to be really intense, but there were so many parallel sessions and everyone did really want to go to more of them. And also, I felt really bad that I couldn't go outside and go to that um, Mo lab, the science lab, uh, the demonstration that was uh, on every now and then, because there was just too much going on inside. There were breakout sessions and uh, people to talk to, and it was just so much. So I always felt like I was missing out on loads of things. But I mean, I suppose the only way to squeeze that amount of stuff in is to do it over more days which is then more expensive for everyone. So I, I I get it. I do get it. And it was actually really fun. So thank you to everyone who organised it. Thank you to everyone who spoke and everyone who came up and hung out with us and said hello. It was really great meeting you. And uh, I'm pretty sure I've gushed about that already, but I am quite tired. So I can't entirely remember what I said. Uh, also, my throat is feeling a bit raspy. So I think I've possibly done my allotted talking for the month now so i think i i shall just be very quiet at work for the next couple of days and that'll be nice anyway thank you so much everyone (laughs) so it's sunday night at well it's monday morning at 10 to 1 i've just got back from dancing in my belly dance class in london after a family day on Saturday and getting back from the conference past midnight again on Friday night. The cats have been very lonely and upset with me, so now they're jumping around and generally being quite disruptive. Jenny has asked me for some final thoughts to record um, for our episode. I'm not sure I have any thoughts about anything right now. I was struck by how everyone was very keen to see changes and make improvements. I was struck by the fact that we still haven't found a solution for the early career conservators, even though the situation doesn't seem to have changed, but only that the number of early career conservators has massively increased, so the problem is worse. I was struck by how extremely supportive everyone was for the C word and for the goal of advocacy and skill sharing and general communication in the conservation community. That was lovely. I was also struck by how genuinely interested everyone is by stories of straightforward conservation. I think it's interesting that whenever you write a paper, you always think, this has to be groundbreaking. This has to be really, really interesting and super exciting. But the things that, you know, when everyone takes photos of the interesting slides, the ones that people seem to take photos of are the photos of the conservation that are, you know, fairly straightforward conservation techniques, which I think is something else backing up the idea that we could use modern media to teach people skills and share ideas and inspiration and stuff. Oh, I was struck by the fact that people seem to really like the shaking up of things, the shaking up of the status quo and the encouragement of diversity and variation and of change. Ow, the cats are attacking my feet. Stop it, Cuthbert, stop it. (laughs) My feet are in danger. I'm going to (laughs) go. Thank you again, everyone, for your love and support at Icon19. Thanks for listening. With the C Word, and you'll be listening to Christina Rosaic, Chloe Rumsey, and me, Jenny Mathiason. Check out our website at thecword.show, tweet us at the C Word Podcast, 
or simply email us on thesecretpodcast at gmail.com. The intro and outro music is Spring by Didi Music, used under a Creative Commons attribution license. This has been a Wooden Dice production. Thank you.